Good morning. It is week six, and I wanted to do a video real quick on Romeo and Juliet, Act 1, Scene 4, uh, just to help you kind of get ready with some of your questions for the week. So again, the more that we read this and the more that you do it, um, the more familiar you will get with his language. All right, so let's kind of backtrack here. Um, so just a friendly reminder, we are getting ready for the party at the Capulet house and we have Romeo and his friends Benelvio and Mercutio kind of talking to him before they get ready. Now again, the party is at the Capulet house. They are Montagues, so they're not really necessarily invited. Um, they're going to have to be very careful when they go to the party. But let's kind of see what is going on. So we've got Romeo. What shall the speech be spoke for our excuse? Or shall we on without apology? So he's saying like, what? kind of speech should we give? What should we do? Because we are going to the party and we're kind of crashing it. So Benelio goes, the date is out of such proximity. We'll have no Cupid hoodwink with a scarf, bearing a tartar's painted a bow of lath, scarring the ladies like a crow keeper, nor no without book prologue, faintly spoke, after the prompter for our entrance. But let them measure us by what they will. We'll measure them a measure and we we'll gone. So he's saying, let's not like necessarily announce ourselves. Um, if the other guests see something, eh, go good for them. But really, they're there, kind of might have a dance, kind of check out some of the ladies, and then leave. They're not going to stay too long. So Romeo says, give me a torch. I am not for this ambling. Being but heavy, I will bear the light. So he says, give me the torch. I will carry our light. I am still heavy. So he's still heartbroken over Rosalind. So he's saying, you know, I'm just going to go and kind of keep track of the light and kind of just withdraw. I'm not really kind of feeling going to a party today. And Mercutio says, nay, gentle Romeo, we must have you dance. And Romeo goes, not I, believe me, you have dancing shoes with nimble soles. I still have a soul of lead, so stakes me to the ground and I cannot move. So he says, no, I, I can't dance. I'm just still so upset and feel so heavy from um, kind of being lovesick. So now Mercutio is going to kind of continue to talk to him. And he says, you are a lover. Borrow Cupid's wings and soar them above a common bound. So he's saying, come on, join us. Um, meet a new love. And Romeo says, I am too sore experienced with the shaft to soar with his light feathers and so bound. I cannot bound a pinch above dull wall. Under love's heavy burden do I sink. And he says, um, he love is kind of dragging him down. And he is too lovesick. He's kind of burned from his experience with Rosalind. So Mercutio goes, and to sink in, should your burden love, too great oppression for a tender thing. And Romeo goes, is love a tender thing? It is too rough, too rude, too boisterous, and it pricks like a thorn. So basically he's saying that love is this like cruel thing and that you get hurt when you love. And so he is definitely, again, just very upset about this um, situation with Rosalind. Now, Mercutio is going to continue to kind of try to talk to him to cheer him up. Now, just a little note on Mercutio. Mercutio is one of his very good friends. Mercutio is known as being very cynical. So he's kind of a little negative, skeptical about life. But he's also very witty. You might see him use some puns, some irony. He definitely has a sense of humor. And he's going to try to kind of convince Romeo to kind of give up on Rosalind, not to take love and things too seriously. And to have a good time. So Mercutio goes, if love be rough with you, be rough with love. Prick love for pricking and you beat love down. And he says, like, don't be hurt by love. If love is rough with you, you be rough too. Okay. So don't just be a victim of love. Give me a cause to put my visage in. A visor fire for a, a visor for a visor. What care I? What curious I if those close deformities? Here are the beetle bros shall blush for me. And Benelvio goes, come, knock, and enter, and no sooner but every man betake him to his legs. He says, let's go. Let's go start dancing. Let's put our masks on for this party. And Romeo says, a torch for me. Let wanton's lights of heaven tickle the senseless rushes with their heels. For I'm proverbed with a grandsire phrase. I'll be a candle holder and look on, but the game was never so fair, and I am done. So he's saying here um, that he kind of will go. Um, but that he's not going to be really involved with love. He says, for I'm proverb with a grandsire phrase. And it's this old saying that you can't lose if you can't play the game. So he's saying, I'm not going to be lovesick again after this because I'm not going to bother to fall in love. Um, so that's what he's saying here. So I'll kind of watch you. I'll look on. 
but I don't want to be involved in this game. So Mercutio says, Tut, done's the mouth. The constable owns word. If thou art done, we'll draw thee from the mire. Of this Sir Reverend's love, whereas thou stickest up to the ear. Come, we burn daylight. Ho. Oh. So he says, we will pull you out of this, basically. Let's just go. But Romeo says, nay, that's not so. And Mercutio goes, I mean, sir, in delay. We waste our lights in vain, like lights but day. Take our good meeting, for our judgment sits. Five times in that ur, once in our five wits. So he is saying, like, come on, use your common sense. Okay, get out of this. It's what I'm meaning because he says, let's go. There's still daylight. And Romeo goes, well, it's nighttime. He's like, that's not what I'm meaning. Don't be so literal. Use your common sense. We still have time tonight. It's still early in the evening for us to go to this party. Let's take advantage of the present. Let's take advantage of now. Romeo goes, and we mean well in going to this mask, but tis not wit to go. Why, may I ask? And Romeo goes, I dreamt a dream tonight. And Mercutio goes, and so did I. Well, what was yours? And he says that dreamers often lie. And this is actually a pun that I used in a um, PowerPoint that we did. So he's, Romeo's talking about a dream that he had. And so he said, I dreamt a dream tonight. And Mercutio goes, and so did I. And Mercutio says that dreamers often lie. Well, we know one meaning of the word lie is that, yes, when you're dreaming, you're probably lying down asleep, right? But he's also saying that dreamers often lie. Sometimes people that are dreaming, it can kind of be a play in your imagination. Have you ever had like a scary dream that you thought was true, but it was obviously completely made up? It's not reality. So he's saying, you know, don't put too much faith into like dreams that you have when you're sleeping because that's not reality. So Romeo says, and bed asleep while they do do dream things that come true. So Romeo seems to think that he's, his dreams and what he's experiencing will come true in reality. So then Mercutio is going to continue to go on to tell Romeo kind of about love. And so this is a famous monologue that Mercutio is going to tell, and it's about Queen Mob. Now, Queen Mob is kind of like a fairy queen. She is known for causing mischief. And Mercutio is basically going to tell Romeo that the mischief and his love sickness and his dreams is caused by this little harmless fairy um, that kind of makes people feel lovesick. And there's not necessarily um, reality and that uh, he kind of needs to let go of this love sickness because, again, part of being a teenager at times is what he's saying is that you may have to experience some of this, but to kind of brush it off. So when we read kind of these descriptions here, I don't want you to get too set on all the details because he's just describing like this little fairy. But that's what that's standing for. So this is his monologue. Notice it's one long speech. And then I see Queen Moth has been with you. She is the fairest midwife, and she comes in shape no bigger than an agate stone. On the forefinger of an elder man, drawn with a team of little Tommies, other men's noses they lie asleep. Over men's noses they lie asleep. Her wagon spoke is made of long spinner's legs, the covers of the wings of grasshoppers. Her traces of the smallest spider web, her color, her collars of the moonshine, watery beams, her whip of cricket bows, the lash of film, her wagoner, small gray coat gnat, not half so big a round little worm, pricked from the lazy finger of a maid. Her chariot is an empty hazelnut made by the joiner squirrel of an old grub. A time out mind the fairy's coachmakers, and in the state she gallops night by night through lovers' brains, and then they dream of love on courtiers' knees that dream on courtiers' straits, over lawyers' fingers who straight dreams on fees, over ladies' lips who straight on kisses dream which off the angry mob with blisters plagues, because their breasts with sweet maids tainted are. Sometimes she gallops over a courtier's nose, and then dreams he of smelling out a suit. And sometimes, because she whiz a tight pig's tail, tickling a parson's nose as lies asleep. Then he dreams of another benefice. Sometimes she drives over a soldier's neck, and then he dreams of cutting foreign throats, of breeches, Amigas, amigados, Spanish blades of health, five phantom deep, and then anon, drums in his ears, which he starts and wakes, and being thus frightened, swears a prayer or two, and sleeps again. This is the very mob, the plaths, manes of horses in the night, and breaks the elf ox and foul sluttish hairs, which once entangled much misfortune bodes. This is the hag when my maids lie on their back, that presses them and leans them first to bear, makes them women of good carriage. This is she. So this is a very, very long description. And he's basically giving us all these little examples of how she is kind of messing with all these different people's dreams and how she's kind of causing mischief and not to kind of take this too seriously. 
And so that's kind of the point that he's trying to make there. So Romeo goes, peace, peace, Mercutio, peace. Thou talks of nothing. And Mercutio goes, true, I talk of dreams, which are the ch children of an idle brain, begot of nothing but vain fantasy, which is as thin of substance as the air, and more inconstant than the wind, who woos. Even now in the frozen bosom of the north, and being angered puffs away from thence, turning against the eye to the drew, dew dropping south. So he says, yes, that's what I'm talking about. I am talking of dreams. It's kind of an idle brain. It's something that, you know, we have in like our imagination. We're going to sleep. We're not supposed to pay too much attention to it. And that's the point I'm trying to make. It's more inconsistent than the wind. You can't rely on that to help reflect your feelings or to help kind of with your future. Now, again, this is what Mercutio is saying in his opinion. He's trying to get um, Romeo out of this lovesickness and not to take his heartbrokenness and his dreams of Rosalind too seriously. So then Manolio, his other friend, says, the wind of you talk of blows us from ourselves. Supper is done and we shall come too late. So Manolio is trying to switch the subject and be like, all right, guys, well, let's kind of go to the present here and we need to kind of focus on going to this party. And Romeo says, I fear too early, for my mind misgives. Some consequence, yet hanging in the stars, shall bitterly begin his fearful date. With this night reveals and expires the terms of a despised life closed in my breath, and my breast, but some vile forfeit of untimely death. But he that steerage of my course, direct my sail, lusty gentleman. So let's backtrack. So he says, I fear too early, for my mind misgives some consequences yet hanging in the stars. So this is that fate concept. He is worried. He says, I fear that there is going to be something that happens tonight that's going to have an awful consequence that's already just kind of written in fate. So it says she'll bitterly begin his fearful date. So something that's going to maybe cause some destruction which this night reveals and expires, revels and expires the term of the despised life close to my breast. So he thinks that there's something that's going to happen that is awful that might cut his life short. And then Benoville goes strike jump and they try to still kind of brush it off and continue on to the party. All right, so I hope that kind of helps you with Act 1, Scene 4. Uh, the clue word today, again, is glitter. Uh, please give me a email or send a comment. Again, feel free to email me if you're having any trouble on this. I'm more than happy to help you. I'm sorry if I know I talk kind of quickly. So if you would like to Zoom, please feel free. Miss you guys terribly. Hang in there.